Hi everyone, Yasas Kekalo Sirtata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to put a meal on the table in like 30 or 40 minutes from start to finish. It's so simple and easy. It's low carb, delicious, and everyone is going to love it. I'm going to show you how to make my version of low carb tuna fish patties. Some people call them tuna cakes. You can use tuna fish, salmon, or your favorite fish for this. Let's get started. All right, so I have three cans. They're seven ounce cans of tuna that's packed in water. You can use tuna that's packed in oil for this recipe too. You're just gonna have to drain it and then put it in a big bowl and just break it all up, flake it up. Again, you can use canned salmon for this too. That does work. I find that sometimes I have cans of tuna laying around and a tuna fish salad can sometimes get boring. So this elevates it and just makes it so delicious. These are little patties. You're gonna be able to eat as sandwiches or put them over a salad or with over cauliflower rice if you're doing low carb. Break them all up and set it aside. And this is where all of the flavor is gonna come from. So I'm using about eight scallions for this recipe. I've already washed them really well and these are unruly so I'm just gonna cut half at a time. You just want to slice them all the way down to the white part. You don't have to use scallions. You can do one large onion and just finely chop it. That's six. I'll do... I have a few extra here. The recipe calls for about eight, but when it comes to scallions, I always like to add more if I have one or two extra. There's no point in popping it back in the fridge. Okay, so I have a cast iron skillet. This is a skillet that I'm gonna use to fry these afterwards. So I'm just gonna pan fry my scallions in here. You wanna cook them to get them really nice and mild in flavor. So you're gonna need about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. Try to get the scallions in the pan and not outside of it. A little pinch of salt, because we season every layer, every step of the way. And I'm just gonna cook these until they're nice and soft, about three or four minutes over medium heat. Okay, so once the scallions have softened and cooked down a bit, you're gonna grate one or two garlic cloves, two are always better than one, <laughs> and just put them in the pan. You can turn the heat off at this point, because there's no more cooking that's gonna happen with uh, the fish cakes. And just warm the garlic through a few seconds, break it up, and warm it through. Don't overcook it, otherwise it will become very bitter. Go ahead and add the scallion and garlic to the tuna mixture. It would probably be better to saute it in a pan that's easier to handle. And just mix everything all up. Okay, now I like to add a half a cup of ground up flax seeds, also known as flax meal. I just buy this big bag from my local Costco. This is not sponsored, but just so you guys have an idea. Um, there are some carbs in it if you're counting carbs, but they're all fiber, so it counts as zero carbs in this recipe. Um, it's also a great alternative for breadcrumbs, but if you don't care about counting carbs, you can definitely add breadcrumbs instead, either Italian breadcrumbs or panko breadcrumbs, which are my favorite. Then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of celery seed, a heaping teaspoon of dill, which is probably all I have left in here. You could use fresh dill. Uh, it would be like about a quarter cup of fresh dill, then some mayonnaise, about two to three tablespoons, a tablespoon of mustard, whatever your favorite mustard is or whatever you have on hand. It could be spicy mustard or plain mustard, this is plain. Then you're gonna need the zest of half of a lemon. You could put the whole zest of the whole lemon if you want. This is gonna give it a burst of freshness. And about two tablespoons of lemon juice, about half of a lemon, black pepper, a little pinch of salt, like half a teaspoon or so. You did put that flax seed in there and there's no seasoning in that. And two eggs. You can beat them in a separate bowl and then add them in here, but I'm just gonna beat them right here in the same bowl in the side and then mix them in. And that's it. A good idea is before adding the egg in here, you can give it a taste to check the seasoning. I already added the egg. It should be fine. And if you want to, you can finally chop some parsley in here, some mint, whatever fresh herbs you have or love can go in here. 
That's it. The filling is ready. You can pop this in the fridge so it can set a little bit for about an hour or so. But if you're in a time crunch, you can form them into patties straight away. And I'm going to do that right now just so that way you could see that they are able to be made right away, right when you need them. I like to measure using a third of a cup measuring cup. And I'm going to take a little bit at a time. And you can put some oil on your hands if you're worried about them sticking, but it's pretty easy. They stay together. It is a little bit of a loose, juicy cake. And I'm just using this cutting board here, but you can put this on parchment paper or anything you want. If you're freezing them, if you've made a double batch, you could just put a piece of parchment paper over a baking tray and just form these, put these on there, pop them in the freezer. As soon as they freeze solid, or they're frozen solid, then you can transfer them in freezer safe bags or just plastic wrap the whole uh, tray and they'll stay fresh in there for two to three months. Then you could just thaw them out overnight in the refrigerator is best or if you're doing it last minute, however you do it on the counter for about an hour and then just pan fry them. I haven't tried uh, doing these in the air fryer, but I'm sure they turn out perfectly in there too. I think um, they're better in the pan though. They get sort of caramelized. So as you can see, it makes 10 really nice sized patties. So I have a cast iron skillet that's heating over a medium high heat. I'm going to add a little layer of olive oil at the bottom and then carefully put the fish cakes in about four or five in at a time. I wouldn't put more so that way they cook evenly and cook them about three minutes on each side. Then transfer them to a plate that's lined with paper towels so that we can absorb any excess oil and they'll be ready to serve. So the tuna cakes are ready and I like to serve them over cauliflower rice. I just buy frozen cauliflower rice and then I just season it with a little bit of salt and butter, cut up some fresh parsley and mint and it's ready in like five minutes. So if you're keeping it low carb, that's a great way to serve this meal. But like I said, you can serve this in a sandwich or over regular rice, whatever you like. Tzatziki goes really good with this. A sriracha mayo would be really nice, nice with this your favorite sauce, any of them will do. It's a budget friendly meal. So again, it's really nice to make a double batch like I did. You'll notice that the ones that I'm freezing are not as green as the ones that we made together. That's because I ran out of scallions. So I just sauteed an onion and I added that. Just like I said before, you can switch things out. If you don't have something, use what you do have. You could throw in more veggies like roasted red peppers or more herbs, whatever you like. Let me know how you guys are gonna make them in the comment section down below, but definitely make a double batch because you're gonna wanna have these on hand for the busy days. It is time for the taste test. And I like to squeeze some lemon on top. Mm. Delicious. It's sort of creamy on the inside, nice and crisp and caramelized on the outside. Give it a try and see how they turn out in the air fryer or if you can bake them if you want. And let me know in the comment section down below. The recipe can be printed on DemetriusDishes.com. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.